On today's Apple Daily, UK's Ofcom bans network locked phone sales. New stars signed to Apple TV Plus. A14T chips for iMacs with Apple GPUs. iCave answers and notification squad updates. This is the Apple Daily. I'm David for Living on iPad and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you can get a shout out at the end of the video, just like the guys at the end of this one. And about 85% of people watching this video are not subscribed. So please, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe because it does really help the channel out. Thanks. The UK's Ofcom bans network locked phone sales. So from December this year, cellular providers in the UK will not be allowed to sell handsets locked to their networks, making it harder for customers to change their networks down the line. Ofcom is kind of the UK's version of the FTC, if that makes sense. So they are the kind of communications watchdog who basically make sure that people are following the rules that are laid out. So this ruling is primarily to encourage competition between the networks based on pricing, um, as many people are put off uh, from switching by the fact that their phones are locked to a specific network. Now, it doesn't particularly take a lot to unlock a phone. I think it's about £10 and you can get it done in under an hour, either online or at local shops. However, a lot of people don't realise that they can do that and so they are encouraged to buy a brand new phone when they switch networks, which will contribute to e-waste if they've got a perfectly good phone that they would have been happy to stick with. Not everyone knows they can do it, so it's a good thing that they're not going to be locked in the first place. Now, it's not every network here in the UK that does that. Uh, I think EEBT uh, and a few others do 302 and a few others don't. It'll be nice to have everyone up on a level playing field. New stars signed to Apple TV+. Plus. Apple TV Plus has announced Rose Byrne and Seth Rogen's platonic comedy series, uh, which I believe is signed for 10 episodes. Also signing Jon Stewart as the host for a new current affairs show on the platform. That is the big win for me. All of this aligns with Apple's extension of the free Apple TV Plus subscriptions that now run to the end of January for anyone that bought an eligible Apple device uh, last year after Apple TV Plus was announced. So the reason that they've extended the free trial is because a lot of their series were delayed in second series production uh, because of COVID and obviously now they should be ready by the end of January, but they've also announced a whole bunch of new stuff that will be coming as well, which is great because the more stuff that comes to Apple TV Plus, the better an offer it is. But also bear in mind that Apple One, which will incorporate Apple TV Plus, will also be live by then. So anyone that's getting a free trial of that, those trials will be over by the end of January as well. So people will be encouraged to resubscribe. A14T chips for iMacs with Apple GPUs. So these are now expected to come in the first half of 2021, which uh, sounds pretty good to me. Not uh, not a bad timeline if we're going to be getting IMAX early next year. The leaks came out of China Times. According to Luke Miani, this lines up well with the 12 core system on the chips that we've been hearing about rumours for based on Apple's A14 uh, 5 nanometer process. Luke is... I believe uh, expecting that to come with four high efficiency chips and eight high performance chips in the desktop version. So the A14T, we don't know what the T stands for yet, but uh, leave your guesses down in the comments for what the T is. Turbo, uh, that's an old Pentium thing, I think. Do you remember when computers used to have a turbo button on them? I'm old. The A14 uh, is codenamed as Mount Jade and is likely to be intended for the desktop platforms with active cooling like Mac Mini or iMac, but could well make its way to the higher end laptops as well. IK Answers. Caden Kamamura has asked, hi David, big fan of all your videos. Um, they help me to get onto Apple products. He wants a shout out for his YouTube channel? Fine. Uh, go and check it out. He's got three subscribers at the minute. Let's get him into at least double digits um, after this show. Uh, and he's going to be talking Apple stuff too. So you guys are into it already. Cool. Number two. Uh, can I have more information on Apple Silicon MacBook Pro? I've been watching tons of videos and would like to confirm maybe there's something I missed. Biggest question with Apple Silicon MacBook Pro is if they're going to be able to run macOS apps and iOS apps. How would they do this? Are they going to make the keyboard completely digital or is it going to be a touch screen? Thank you, I'd love it if you could make a video on this to clear it up and I'd love a shout out. So we're going to do it right now. The way that they're going to do Apple Silicon on uh, existing MacBooks um, with running iOS and iPadOS apps is 
a few different ways. At the moment, there are Catalyst apps, which already exist for macOS, which are things like Twitter. That's already a Catalyst app. Most of the Apple stock apps, so when I say stock apps, I mean things like stocks and things like voice recorder and things like messages, uh, especially in Big Sur, is going to be based on Catalyst. So it uses a lot of the same technologies and it's essentially porting an app over from iPad over to the Mac. Those apps are simple apps that can be used with a mouse or keyboard, quite simply. Um, now, the more complex apps, multi-touch on a trackpad will be um, translated quite easily into touchscreen uh, events. So rotating things, uh, pinch to zoom, all that kind of thing works pretty well already. We, we kind of know that stuff from what the Mac already does. However, obviously, games that would need you to tilt an iPad, things like that, that isn't going to be supported on a Mac. They're not going to have accelerometers in them, as far as we know, but I mean, who knows? And they're not going to have touch screens to begin with. They are going to have still the physical keyboards. They're still going to have a trackpad and all of that sort of stuff. But it's going to be uh, exactly the same as if you were interacting with those iPad apps on an iPad with a trackpad and keyboard case, with the Magic Keyboard case. So. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, it does look like there will be uh, Apple Silicon Macs that are gonna get touch screens down the line, I would assume, because the way that they've laid out Big Sur does look like they've uh, made a lot of stuff, especially in Control Center and things like that where the sliders are quite big. Um, it all looks like it's been designed to work with touch, but I don't think that's gonna be in the first generation of Apple Silicon that comes out. And as I mentioned, Caden has joined our notification squad along with Thomas Pockagar, Marvin Maker, and A dot R A. I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce that. Ara? Maybe. But that's how it's kind of on his channel. So, thank you guys for joining. Thank you very much for joining the Notification Squad. If you want to join the Notification Squad, as I said at the beginning of the video, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and but you will need to let me know in the comments section that you've joined Notification Squad so that I can give you a shout out because otherwise I won't know that you've done those things because it doesn't notify me. There's a couple more videos coming out this week on top of our normal news shows, so stay tuned for those. We have got a uh, review of this ESR iPad Air case that is coming uh, hopefully today. Um, that is just a case of me finishing off the edit, to be honest. Um, these things are great, by the way, so definitely check that video out, especially if you've got the new iPad Air or um, an 11 inch iPad Pro because they're pretty close to the same ones. And then we've also got one where I am speeding up uh, this Mac uh, without spending any uh, money on hardware. So check that out if you have an older Mac that you would, uh, you would like to keep up to speed. Thank you all for subscribing and viewing and uh, making this actually work. Thank you so much and we'll see you on tomorrow's show. Thank you.